Hello and welcome again to RC Model Reviews and I'm going to be using this thing quite a bit in upcoming videos. This is the new Spectrum Analyzer that I purchased for a, a real steal of a price. A lot of people have sent me questions, why are these things so expensive in the first place and what are you going to do with it? Why do you need this thing? Well, in this video I'm going to try and explain a little bit about what a Spectrum Analyzer is, what it does and why it's so useful. Perhaps not for you, but certainly for me. And this one is a BK Precision 2650, I think it is. And when they first came on the market, they were six grand, $6,000 worth. And that's an awful lot of money, and to be honest, I don't think they're worth it. But they are getting on a bit now. They were quite an old model. I think they might even have been superseded by the 65, uh, was it 2650A or something, which has got a better display and so forth. But it'll do the job as far as I can see, and this will be just fine for what I'm doing. Right, so... What is a spectrum analyzer? Well, spectrum analyzer is a radio receiver. It's as simple as that. I'll show you now what it does, and uh, I'll show you how I'll be using it in coming videos. Okay, to the whiteboard, which is actually quite old and tired now. I have to get a new one, because it's only my cupboard door. But let's have a look at what a spectrum analyzer does. Let's draw the spectrum of radio frequencies along here. There we go, let's say this is zero. Well, say, let's say, because we're dealing with radio, let's say this is um, 10 megahertz. We all know what that's a low frequency. And up here we might have um, 3.5 gigahertz. Just use that for no other reason than I felt like it. And if we look at it, so obviously we've got some, our 72 megahertz band might be in here, and our 2.4 gigahertz band might be in here, the UHF band might be in here. So these are all little bands along the radio frequency spectrum. And you've already seen the spectrum analyzer I have that I plug into the laptop, the Y-SPY, which I've reviewed. And that's only capable of looking at this little piece of the band, just that little piece there, the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum. So that's fine for looking at how 2.4 gig systems work. And it's, it's not a calibrated system, so it doesn't have a great deal of accuracy, but it, it's a perfectly good tool for seeing whether your system's frequency hopping or if there's interference around, all that sort of stuff. But a system like the uh, spectrum analyzer on the bench there, it covers a much wider range. In fact, I think it's 100 kilohertz through to 3.5 gigahertz, but that's by the by. Now, what happens when the spectrum analyzer is running and we see a signal? Well, let's say we have a signal in the 72 megahertz band. If we have it, it would look like that. Because this here, this axis here, is amplitude. Stronger the signal, the higher the line, or the, the further up the mark will go on there. So uh, this might be a weak signal, this might be a very strong signal. So we can see two things with a spectrum analyzer. We can see the frequency, that's its position along this line, and the strength of any signal, which is quite handy. So when we look at the 72 megahertz band, we'll just get something that looks like this. It won't actually look like that. It'll look a peak that looks something like this. All right, because Frequencies aren't isolated. When you modulate with FM or AM, you actually cause the frequency to spread a bit. And although it's not spread spectrum, it's not just a single isolated frequency, it's actually moving according to the modulation, which is the information that we impose on, whether it's 72 megs or other frequencies, right? So that's the spectrum analyzer. And I say the strength of the one that I've just spent large amounts of money on is that it covers a very wide range of the spectrum. So I can check stuff in the 72 meg band, stuff in the UHF band, stuff in the 2.4 gig band, and I can also just look at what the noise is, because somewhere down here there's a thing called the noise floor. You probably might have heard that, the noise floor. The noise floor is a, it looks like a wavy line like this, and it might go up in some places, and it might go down in other places. But it's not any actual single signal, it is just the background noise. You know when you turn on a radio and you turn the volume right up, put it off the station and it's hissing? That's the background noise, and this is what creates the noise floor. That's the noise floor, and so we'll get that background level. Then when we have a signal, you'll see a signal appear out of the noise floor like that, and then we can measure its amplitude and its frequency. So spectrum analyzers are really simple, and it might look like this is constantly displaying this all in real time, but because it is a radio receiver, what it's actually doing is it's checking this frequency, then checking that frequency, then checking that frequency, so it actually scans along the entire band over a span. One of the things we have on a frequency uh, a spectrum analyzer is the span, and the span is the piece of the band you're looking at. Might be from there to there. Might be from you know, 200 megahertz to 900 megahertz. That would be the span. 
So you can, most frequency uh, spectrum analyzers let you change the span from a very small piece of the band to the entire band, depending on what you're looking for. Because if you're try trying to track down some noise, obviously look at the big picture first, and you, oh, what's that? You can zoom in on the little picture, find out the exact nature and amplitude and frequency of the signal. So that's pretty much it. Pretty much it. And uh, there's not much else to say. It's just a really expensive, really complicated receiver that can re apparent, appears to receive a whole lot of frequencies at once, and it just draws lines based on the strength of the signals at any given point. Now, there are lots of other things you can do with a spectrum analyzer because you can calculate power levels and that sort of stuff, but for what we're doing with this re these reviews, that's basically it. Now, let's have a look at how it works in practice. Okay, so here we are. We're set up, and I'm going to do a simple measurement. Now, you'll notice that if you look closely at the numbers on here, I've got this set to a little triangle there, which is my marker set to 72 megahertz. And the center frequency for this whole span here is 70 megahertz. And I have a span, as it's called, of 100 megahertz. So basically that means it's going to be 50 megahertz from there to there. So this is 20, 20 megahertz down there and 120 megahertz up the top. We've got a little bit of noise here. That may be FM radio stations, I'm not sure. I should check the frequency, but I'm going to turn on the transmitter now. This is a 72 megahertz transmitter, and watch what happens. Look at that. That's your good old-fashioned FM 72 megahertz radio transmitter. That's what it looks like. It's just a bit of a spike. I could make that spike wider if I wanted to by zooming in in terms of resolution, but there we go. That's a typical old-fashioned 72 megahertz transmission. You can see that on the 72, roughly, what is it, 72 megahertz, there's a huge spike, which is the power coming out of this transmitter. So it's simple now. Obviously, if I wanted to find the exact frequency, I could make everything a little bit more accurate and increase the resolution, but uh, that's all I wanted to show you on this. 72 megahertz transmitter, I turn it off, and it goes away. Turn it back on, it comes back. And because the spectrum analyzer is a radio receiver, if I move the transmitter further away, you notice the signal drops off. If I move the transmitter closer, the signal gets bigger. It's simple. It's just like your RC receiver, but it's looking at a wide range of frequencies all at once. In fact, in this case, it's going from 20 megahertz to 120 megahertz. And it's, look, it, it's not actually doing it all at once, it's actually scanning across the entire band. But it's doing it so quickly that it looks like it's in real time. So there you go. So now we'll look at a 2.4 gig system, see what that looks like on the spectrum analyzer. To look at 2.4, what I have to do is change some of these settings. So let's change the frequency here. I'll wind that right up to 2.4 gigahertz. You see the number changing up here, 2.2, 2.4. In fact, I'll go past 2.4 because we'll start at about 2.44 should do it. So that's the center line. That's the frequency of that center line there. And I'll just move my little marker so it's back in the same place. Whoops. Press the right button. There we go. And now what I'll do is, um, I think the span is 100 megahertz. That should, I'll change that, actually, just change the span. I just press the span button, make that 200 megahertz. And now I'll turn on a 2.4 gigahertz transmitter. Here we go, wait for it to start up. Now this time, try, we have to change it. These transmitters, the old 2.4, not as powerful as the 72 megahertz ones. The 72 megahertz ones actually put out about half a watt. So what I have to do now is just increase the sensitivity. So I go to the... Um, reference and I wind up the sensitivity and you can see the signals get bigger and now you can actually see that this is sort of measuring doesn't catch every pulse all the time because sometimes the scan doesn't coincide with the transmission because this is a hopping system so what I'll do is I'll go to my calc here and I'll say I want to see the maximum what have I done? Where am I? Oh, I see. I'm in the wrong place. Just twiddling the wrong knobs. As I say, this is new. So I shall now change it to maximum. And now you get a better idea. Now you can see that it's actually plotting. And I actually change the span again because it's, it's changed the span to 100. That'll look better. There we go. Now you can see that this frequency hopping system uses three frequencies. In fact, this is the... Um, Walkera system. Just hops on three frequencies. Not very good, really. Okay, so let's have another look at what we might use the spectrum analyzer for. At the moment, we're sitting here looking at, and I'll just change the mode, just go to normal mode. 
this is the 433 megahertz part of the band. We've got, currently got the center frequency set to 430 in a span of 200, so that's from 330 to 530 megahertz. There's a little bit of noise here from something, I don't know what that is, but what I'm going to do now, I've got the old Horizon HD camera on my hat cam, I'm going to turn that on, and with a little bit of luck, look at that. So now you can see what's happened, the noise has just come up, and there we go. So what was a line way down here, now has some really big spikes in it, and quite a bit of noise. So as you'll see on the review of the Horizon version 3 camera, this device is really useful for measuring the amount of noise that something that shouldn't even be a transmitter is putting out. And I'll turn off the Horizon camera and that should go back down again. Here we go, Horizon camera's off. So you see how much noise. Now you couldn't really see that any other way than with a spectrum analyzer. And it's, it goes right down, it goes from the 230 megahertz right up to 430 something megahertz. So if you're running a UHF system with that old Horizon camera, you're going to have some problems. So you'll have to watch the review video to see if it's any better with the version 3. So there you go. That's the spectrum analyzer. And that's a little bit of what it's used for. It's basically just a really, really smart radio receiver that has an LCD display to show you how much strength there is on any given frequency at any given time. But it has a massive really useful range of uses from checking out the noise something as innocuous as a camera might make to making seeing how your 2.4 system hops and checking the frequency of your old 72 megahertz system it's all really rather useful and i'm working on other gear here which requires me to make sure that transmitters don't have some unnecessary outputs and i'll be doing that with the rm malek uhf system and also, I think the Dragon Link is sending me one to be reviewed. I'm not sure. I think so. In that case, we'll do the comparison, see if they, which is the cleanest transmitter and which is most susceptible to the kind of noise that you'd be getting from. Something like this camera. So stay tuned. Oh, I had hoped to do a better video than this, but that's the best I can do on short notice about the Spectrum Analyzer. Thank you for watching. Any questions on the bottom, uh, thumbs up if you liked it, and watch out for the videos that feature the Spectrum Analyzer.